Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the one and only Lumberjack Landlord. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, even though Dion was awesome this morning, jumping in here. Daily <laughs> Total time. shock, doing my daily financial yeah. news live. He comes in, my dogs go crazy. I'm like, my dogs are with me every day. Why are they going crazy? And sure enough, he's opening the door. And he's like, hi. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Dion, what, what's going on? <laughs> That was, awesome. that, that was hilarious. And then he was out in and out like seven minutes. I'm like, well, okay. Cool. Good seeing you. I see you. <laughs> Got a picture. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, anyways, uh, a video that you and I did with him on Tuesday that came out today, I believe, uh, was uh, create your own pension. Mm -hmm. I want to tie that into a conversation I had with Anna Kelly yesterday, who's gone from negative 700K in net worth to multimillionaire status. And she credited her best financial decision ever was house hacking, house hacking, selling the big Texas house, moving to Pennsylvania, two kids, second floor, Pennsylvania, fourplex. So I just want to talk about once again, two guys that came from very little, uh, mm -hmm. our best financial decisions. And I really like Dion's concept of creating a pension. I have to admit, wasn't my goal. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about it. I mean, what what what'd you take from that conversation? What do you think about your best financial decision ever being house hacking? Would you say the same thing or not? What, what, what's, oh, yeah. what do you think? If I had to start the journey all over again at 20, that's exactly what I would do. I would house hack nine times in 13 years. Like I am very blessed to feel like maybe I didn't, but to feel like I made all the right decisions, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, you know, I look at your example where, you know, you basically go from eight to 80 and it's because you listened, you, you watched, you listened and you acted, you, yes. you, you, you moved, you had moved, you, you made that move to do that. Mm -hmm. Your market went down 75%. And so you were winner, winner, chicken dinner, like all day long. Yeah. And so for me, you know, there weren't a lot of markets that went down 75% good slash bad for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah bad for me because there wasn't really that opportunity. And so for me in New Hampshire, it was much more like slow and steady won the race. Mm -hmm. And so I think we capped out at like maybe 30% in the worst areas, but other areas were only like 20% or 25%. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, where I think that the house hacking thing made it possible to even be the size business that I am today without having to take on crazy risk. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that grew a ton in the last two or three years that wrote paper that I wouldn't use for dog naps. Like yeah. there, they, there's a lot of investors that are all over YouTube that are talking about really sticky, stinky deals that they did with financing that balloon payments in the next year or year and a half pucker up buttercup. It's going to be a rough year. Yeah. And so for me, the house hacking that made such a difference was I literally house hacked every, I mean, almost every house until um, even when I was married. I mean, Ashley and I, we had roommates while we were married. Like mm. it was a little bit weird and I might not do that over again. I didn't really like the roommates. Um, but, uh, but as a single guy, as a single guy, Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be like, I'd be doing it by the bed, like putting bunk beds in the rooms. If I had to do over again at this point, <laughs> make it a real profit center. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, house hacking by far um, was the biggest equalizer for me in a more slow and steady market. Um, biggest equalizer for me by far, because I, I mean, we, when we, when it came down and you could only do four loans, I was done. I already had five. Mm. I could not get another loan and banks, the commercial side of the banks, they weren't talking to small dinky investors like me, the mm -hmm. commercial side. No, they were worried about their massive hotel yeah. and strip malls and all that other stuff that was like their, that debt was resetting. So the last thing they wanted to do was talk to a small landlord like me. So the, my only option, and this was, you know, this was on, on the road to elite, you know, the, the only option was the only way I'm going to be able to buy a house is if I move into it. That's mm -hmm. my only option. I can get another mortgage, but only if it's on an owner arc mortgage. That's the only option that I have. Yeah, I'm such a big believer in house hacking. I believe it is a cheat code to wealth, stealing Dion's phrase. Um, mm -hmm. More and more people do it. it. It's so important that we're doing two deep dives on it for my students, right? This weekend, Saturday, the 16th, 9 a.m., we have Todd Baldwin and Spencer Cornelia, uh, two rock stars. 
yeah. uh, who I trust will credit house hacking with how they got really how they got where they are, which are both fantastic positions. And then the following week, we're going to have you and Dion on to talk about house hacking units because yes, they're different. And they I want to make, I sure. want to make sure we have experienced people. So folks, I believe house hacking is again, if, if, if on a Kelp, decades experience on finance, uh, big house downsize gets uncomfortable upstairs in the snow in Pennsylvania with kids. If she's willing to do it into a recession from a negative 700 K net worth starting point. Yeah, it's pretty good. And then the other thing about Dion and that pension conversation, I never looked at it that way. That topic he did, he sprung on us was awesome because for me, all I was trying to do, um, was have a better retirement. My vision when I bought Norris Drive is, damn it, I just want to get to four. I had no dreams of eight, let alone 80, let alone whatever. Sure. It was like, no, man, we're going to get to four. I want, I, I, my whole thought process was I want to have a better fine. I want to have a better retirement than my parents. Selfishly speaking, that was, <clears throat> that was the extent of my goal. That was it. Sure. Wasn't a big goal. But for me, it felt like a big goal after losing all that money in the stock market. Um, but then, yeah, you're right. Do the homework, daily discipline, all the stuff that I'm really good at, uh, yeah. listening, taking action. Yes. It, it really can become something and, and, you know, retired at 45 and, and haven't, you know, haven't worked a day in my life since. So it's, um, it's, it, it really is like a pension, I guess. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think, you know, so <clears throat> millennial Mike and I did a video on, on my channel, um, this last week and it was really kind of who inspires you. I right? saw that. And so inspiration versus motivation. And so what I think is, is I think there's, oh, it isn't the mute work. So inspiration and motivation, I think that there's a difference. Yeah, I think sure. that inspiration is somebody that your story is very inspiring. I believe my story is pretty inspiring. I would agree. But what we did, what we did is where we go from inspiring to motivating. Correct. This is how we did it. You can do it too. Yes, I'm smart, but I still had to do the work. Mm -hmm. You can do the work too. And by the way, just watch what we did. And that's yeah. going to give you a pretty damn good start. Yeah. And so my belief is, is that I think the position that people need to put themselves in is stop with the idea <clears throat> that your solution only looks like buying your own first single family home. Stop dictating what, what the next step in the journey is, right? Like you and I always, we, we acquire properties all the time. <clears throat> we have a plan for that property. Yeah. Oh, I have a plan sometimes. for it as soon as escrow is open. Yes, exactly. And, and, and sometimes that's exactly what happens sometimes. And other times it's not what happens at all because yeah, sometimes. you have to be willing to be data driven, see what the defense is giving you. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to keep on driving the lane when they're clogging it with five knock yourself out, get smacked around all night long, mm -hmm. you know, and be a shack level free throw shooter and shoot 50%. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose. <clears throat> Hack a shack existed for a reason. Yeah. Or you take what the defense gives you. You stand back, you shoot the open J. Just mm -hmm. that simple. So I think for us, I think that, you know, what, what I think all of your experts have done a phenomenal job at is a lot of them came from nothing, which I love. Oh, yeah. A lot of them turned it into something, which obviously I love. Um, but anybody can be motivated by any number of those folks, but truly one of the biggest differences for people that created that momentum is house hacking. It's how they, it's the, it was the fastest way to get from zero to even just the first step. It's the fastest way to do it. I, uh, again, I fully believe that if I had to do it over again, that's yeah. exactly where we would start. Um, again, the, the journey to financial independence really, at least via the way we do it with real estate, you got to get on the property ladder. The yes. first one is always the hardest. If yes. you are an investor and you have to save up 25%, that takes a while. Yeah. But if you're going to house hack, get an owner rock three and a half or maybe 5% down conventional, oh. much, much faster. And then, oh, by the way, you take your largest expense, which for most of us is rent, take it to zero, shoot, take, cut it in half. Mm -hmm. All of that should go back to savings. So you do it again. And yeah, if, if, if you could house hack every 18 months or two years, I don't think that's unrealistic. No, it, it, and you, you live out of plastic totes. <laughs> it's okay. You're, you're 22 was, years old. Who cares? We were, yeah, we were fine with it. We were in our twenties. I was in my twenties and into my 
early to late 30s, mm-hmm. actually kind of like mid 30s, I finally got a bureau. Like, yeah. oh, I might as well. Was, yeah, you found it on like, the side of the street. On yeah, uh, yard sale, but yeah. yeah same um, thing. But, but <laughs> technically it was the same thing. Um, but that's where I think the opportunity is, is that, you know, we didn't, we knew that we had a goal. We knew that eventually life, eventually money wouldn't be a thing for us. Mm -hmm. Eventually we would kind of do whatever we want, Mm -hmm. but we were willing to do whatever it took along that journey to get there, whether it was, you know, not having property managers and not doing a bunch of things that we would have loved to have do. I was, I was asked, um, last night on a, in a speaking engagement that I had, um, they said, well, when did you have the, why did you decide not to have a, a property manager? They said, the decision was made for me. I couldn't afford it. Yeah. I, we couldn't afford it. Yeah. And the deals that we could get at the time didn't allow for yeah. being able to get a property manager. And so it was one of those things where it was the same thing with the work that we did in the unit. So same exact thing. But I think people need to find people that forget about inspiration. We need to grow up. No more mm-hmm. inspiration. Now it needs to be motivation what is that person or that, that, that yeah. person that you're watching, what are they doing to get you to think about it and actually take action? Yeah. That's funny. Cause uh, you and Mike again, talked about Gary V right. And the, the comments yeah. about Gary V from you are like, no, duh, no, duh. Very simple. Like blah, yes. blah, blah. Yep. Uh, what I take from Gary V is um, again, this is part of my Gary V is inspiral to me because not because of the hustle porn and all the simple stuff, none of that. What is important for me is Gary V has essentially been saying the same thing for a decade. Constantly executing. Yep. Right. It's the same message over and over because he never knows when you're ready to listen as somebody who is not interested in the next hottest thing. Right. I, what do I talk about? Buy box, daily discipline, average change your life with four. My story hasn't changed in four years. You can watch my 2008 bigger pockets interview. With Josh Dorkin, it's essentially the same crap. So yeah. what makes me feel good is I look at Gary V saying, well, Gary V saying the same thing in 2022 that he did in 2012. It gives me, it gives me hope. Unlike other creators, so like every year it's a different gig or different thing. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm the same guy from five years ago. So that's what Gary V, that's what I take from Gary V is you, just be yourself. Keep saying Consist- the same thing. Yep. Yep. Consistency. I think that, I think that there are a lot of people that, I think he's great for the overthinker. Oh yeah. Go, go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And okay. Go. Uh, no, go. Yep. Nope. Na- okay. Go. Yep. Yep. Nope. Do that plan and go. Okay, cool. When you get home on your way home, you should be texting people. So when you get home, you can go. And that's the issue that he, that's, that's where, again, for me in the very beginning, it was like more for me, it was checking the box and validation. Mm. Um, I think that, Grant Cardone was different for me because he was a bigger thinker. Yeah. I think, you know, he does a really good job of painting a bigger, painting the bigger picture. And so I think I, you know, would have or could have stopped at kind of 50, 60 units and been like, like, I got 60. Like, what do I need? Like, where do we need to go from here? I've got 60. Like, and now it's 120. And uh, actually, tonight we close on a fourplex. That gets me to 121. So it's double nice. in 36 in 36 months yeah. or 30 months. We doubled in size. Cause that's yeah. the snowball, right? The yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And so yeah, I think that yeah, house hacking is absolutely the cheat code to wealth. I could never have built, you know, Dion, it says he'd still be working, he'd have one rental property. If you didn't transition out of those eight into the oh, 80, too, you'd I, still be working. Oh, with oh. right. You'd still be, you'd absolutely, you'd be, Mike, you'd be getting ready for your Q3 QBR. Oh, I hate those. (laughs) Yeah, I would. Absolutely. No question. You'd be getting ready for your Q3 QBR. And so for me, and I'm still having to get ready for my QBR, but even though that, even with that said, for me, that was really the biggest difference for me is that in looking at this, it's like, yeah, like we just kind of kept on growing. And I think about my first four properties and kind of where those are now and what the rents are now. And it's like, yeah, like at 60, 65, like I could still live on that, but I'm so glad that we just continued to grow. And just the only focus was, you know, Tom Brady's famous line is what's your favorite championship? And he says the next one, the next one. So what's my favorite deal? It's the next one. Like, I like, I like all my deals, but my favorite deal is my next one. Yeah. 
Yeah. And really what, really what uh, inspired that doubling is you, uh, you were comfortable recycling capital, right? Yes. Which is something Dion yes. has chosen not to do. Yes. Uh, you would not be doubling if you didn't recycle capital. No, no, no. We, you ha- and, and now I look at it, Mike, and on this last cash out refi, I think out of that, you know, probably four and a half million dollars, just that one refi, Mm-hmm. Four and a half million dollars on just that one refi. I think I actually have zero dollars in those deals now. Yeah, I, I, my entire portfolio is zero at this point. It's yeah. pretty crazy so, to think about. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, that's nuts. That's nuts. That's just rolling dollars, right? That's just like not even my own dollars I, anymore. Exactly. Out of this one into this one. Out of this one into this one. I'm very excited. Samuel has taken an interest in Monopoly. Oh, lovely. Oh yeah. That's a it's fun good. One. Nice. It's good. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, son, that's kind of what daddy does. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so it'll be so much fun, but yeah, I, I would just encourage people stop, stop thinking that there's only X way. There's a bunch of different ways, you know, look at Todd Baldwin and Spencer Cornelia who are going to be doing that. I remember when your channel was about 4,000 or 5,000 and Spencer's was about 40,000 or 42. Mm-hmm. And so you've basically 10 X. He's basically 10 X. He's 450, 460 now. Yeah. He's monster yeah. monster and awesome content. And the Love cool it. thing, the cool thing is he's using the revenue that he creates. What is he doing? He's buying more house hacking real estate. Yeah. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. I look forward to Saturday again. The beauty of what awesome. I try to do here is I stay in my lane. I'm happy to go deep anywhere. I'm comfortable when I don't know the channel. I don't think I could have done what we're going to do Saturday when I was 3000 subscribers. No, now that we're 30. Yeah, exactly. Now that we're 35, like, yeah, I'll give you nine. He's given me 90 minutes on his Saturday just to give back. And Oh, by the way, I'm going to do it with my students live, but we will put it on YouTube. I, you know, I'm not going to put it behind some paywall. Right. We're going to control it so I don't get any spammers and stupid bots. Yes. But then we're going to give it away. It's yes. just the right thing to do. So, yes. Very cool. Well, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and on Instagram and my live stream 1130 a.m. Eastern time on Sundays. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you. Thanks, Mike. Mm-hmm. Bye.